All right, these are a pair of VSS AMT1 EM speakers and uh, they're in Las Vegas. I bought them at an estate sale and it looked like uh, from the uh, the rebuild kit over there came with it. They uh, the original owner was apparently going to rebuild them, but uh, who knows, died, lack of time, who knows what caused them not to go forward with the rebuild. But um, I'm an extreme perfectionist in woodworking, metal, and everything else, and, uh, and I actually got a brand new pair of ESS AMT 1A's back in like 1975 it was my f second pair of speakers in my life and uh, and I enjoy music a lot I'm an audiophile I guess and when I get done with these speakers they are going to be flawless um, and it's going to be a fun rebuild. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so this is the stage where I'm at right now with these speakers. I've had to sand them down quite severely, and they had black walnut veneer, which is, uh, from my estimation, um, the original 100% of these speakers were black walnut veneer and then of course they painted some of them black and then some of them they finished out with the black veneer so I'm gonna keep these black that's why I primed them and I would have found it uh, impossible to uh, refinish them in black walnut because the frames were so damaged with nicks and dings and stuff like that that I had to fill that there would be no way I could have actually uh, finished them correctly with the black walnut. These here, uh, they, they basically fit on top here like this and they go in here uh, and hold the fabric housing that goes over the top and everything. And you can see the mess I make, uh, which is incredible to say the least. Uh, but I, I like to use Sherwin and Williams brand lacquer, kind of expensive. And this other stuff here is um, clear coat, which people paint cars with. Um, I might do a clear coat over the top of these with that but I probably just stick with the lacquer simply because it's easier to work with to get a smooth finish and furthermore um, I think it would detract from the original um, condition of the speakers and so up here is where I'm keeping the speakers right now. Um, and I've had to rebuild the, let me see, where is it? Those are the, these are the crossovers. And I had my friend down the street check them out. He's uh, an electronics wizard. He said they're in perfect condition. Nothing wrong with them. The one of the, let me see, where is it? Oh, these. These are the um, top ribbon speakers. And one of these cases was broken down here because obviously somebody had tipped the speakers over some time ago. And um, I was able to get them to uh, glue them back together in original format. Now, I mean, I, when I say glue, I'm not talking about just crap glue. We're talking about some high quality stuff. And interestingly, I've got the replacement ESS ribbons that will go in there along with the brand new replacement 
12 inch ESS woofers. So these speakers are going to be rebuilt to brand new condition of what they were like like 45 years ago. It, it should be cool, really, really cool looking. And of course I'll hook them up to my sound system, which is a stream uh, high fidelity system. And we'll test them there. We'll burn them in for a couple of weeks and then uh, we'll give you a test. But anyways, I'm getting prepared to paint the first black coat on top. Maybe in the next hour, I'm going to start painting them black. I suspect it'll take uh, at least two or three coats of black lacquer. And I might uh, be ready to go clear coat over that tomorrow or next week. We'll see. Anyways, thanks for watching. Well, I got the uh, speakers painted yesterday. And um, I'm happy with the finish. Uh, I think that it, it looks a little, the top is not exactly perfect, but the that's kind of hidden by the ribbon tweeter and stuff anyways. Anyways, I think I'll let the lacquer harden a little longer. And then I think what I'll do is, uh, buff it out just like you would an automotive finish um, and I used a semi-gloss black rather than gloss I I think uh, I, I was gonna get gloss but they didn't have it available they said I only have semi-gloss and I used it and I actually like the semi-gloss better um, so yeah that's kind of cool so I'll try to buff it out maybe today and uh, start putting the drivers in it and everything. We'll see how they sound later too. Uh, and I'll take another video of it when they are reinstalled and everything. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but as I tore it apart, my opinion was these cabinets are absolute garbage I mean like cheap crap garbage particle board but uh, somebody was telling me that uh, that's not the case it's actually yeah the material is cheap but it doesn't resonate with the uh, vibrations of the speakers and so that's why they use particle board it uh, has less vibration to distort the sound so I guess that makes sense Anyways, there you go. So these are the frames. And uh, uh, they're sitting on top of each other right now. But um, I put this uh, fabric here for basically what it is, is hinges. The original, when I tore them apart, looked like they had... Uh, just kind of like a scotch tape right there that would no doubt fail instantly practically and maybe it was designed to fail instantly I don't know but this will hold for decades and these are the side panels and uh, they're going to be covered with fabric here um, maybe tomorrow I'll get to it and uh, finish it up I'll go upstairs and show you the fabric so this is the fabric that uh, Helen is putting together and we'll put those on here as soon as, well maybe tomorrow, we'll see how things go. But this is where the fabric is being cut and getting the edges all fixed up and everything. Alright, well I've got the finish done on the speakers and they're all installed. I've burned them in for about, um, oh, I don't know, maybe six or seven hours so far. As you can tell, well, I don't know, you can't tell, but the speakers are uh, all brand new. The finish turned out pretty good. I, I'm impressed with it. Uh, it's not a high gloss, uh, but it's a Sherwin-Williams paint. Good, pretty good high quality. The only flaw that I could tell 
so far is I get a little bit of alligatoring on the on a, a couple places for the primer but other than that uh, they're perfect just like when they were brand new 40 plus years ago uh, they sound uh, I'm actually shocked at how good they sound and as you can tell from my um, stereo system I know what a good stereo system sounds like uh, they're compared to a forty thousand dollar set of speakers there and I'm telling you <laughs> these ESS speakers after six hours of burn-in so far they're fun to listen to um, quality of sound is uh, I'm just shocked actually I'm just absolutely shocked at how good it is uh, but of course I'm running them with uh, Krell uh, 400 watt uh, amplifiers and uh, top-of-the-line stereo equipment so that's going to make a difference and the speaker cables are Nordost Valhalla so they're uh, again top-of-the-line speaker cables uh, but look at how cool that turned out well, let me see anyways I'm just like I said I'm just impressed so far um, and then I'll go out to the garage and show you what the uh, coverings are how they're coming along all right this is the Dyne audio speakers This is the ESS speakers.
Speakers sound frickin' good, considering they're plus 40 years old or more. Completely rebuilt, of course, with all brand new drivers and ribbon diaphragms. Crossovers look nice, you saw the pictures. The sound quality is absolutely phenomenal. I'm shocked at how good they are. And of course, you can't really hear the quality through this camera, uh, but you could tell the difference between the Dyne Audio, and my Dyne Audios are uh, obviously damn nice speakers, but the difference between the two is not that great. It's quite shocking how good these things sound. They definitely have a surround sounds, kind of, but of course that's the amplifier and all that kind of stuff, but still the speakers are capable. If you have the electronics, the speakers are capable. Thank you. 